Hi everyone, hello and welcome again. Micro Punter here and welcome again to another Saturday live stream, a Saturday microscopy live stream. Hello uh, to everyone around the world. Um, yeah, today I would like to uh, simply do the following. I've got a few specimens here um, and I would like to uh, simply make a few permanent slides. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, and while I'm making the slides, uh, I'm going to be answering again a few questions. Um, yeah, so I would like uh, to um, yeah, uh, start off again by by reading a little bit uh, yeah the live uh, chat. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, do post them. There are uh, like always people from around the world, um, and uh, the first couple of minutes uh, I always uh, yeah want to welcome everyone. And by reading out from where you are, um, the first couple of minutes also give uh, give you a little bit of time for other give uh, give us also a little bit of time for other people to join in. Um, I would also like to ask you please um, if the sound is fine because I remember that some time ago I actually started the live stream and nobody could hear me at all or it was simply too soft uh, so if you just quickly tell me if everything is fine I'm going to start off um, at the very beginning a hello from Vietnam we've got here from the Netherlands a hello okay and so yeah somewhere it's 3 30 uh, right now in the morning <laughs> it's quite early um, yeah so from uh, 30 miles east of Hamburg uh, yeah uh, good evening from the UK we've got here okay from Münsterland in Germany from Tennessee in the United States from Netherlands Netherlands sound is good everyone tells me from Poland very nice from California hello everyone okay um, so what will I be doing today um, the thing is uh, the following uh, I'll be simply making um, a few um, yeah, permanent slides because I wanted to make them anyway and so I told myself why not just simply make it live uh, together with you um, so it's not going to be something totally new or exciting today but I will be making some slides of course I'll also be looking um, at them okay um, yeah there's some hello from lower Austria wow okay uh, just uh, very close by from where I am from Ontario Canada okay so good um so i want to give you a little bit of context here of what i'll be doing today um i've got a few specimens here and uh, if you've seen the the picture um, in the thumbnail um that's indeed the varroa mite uh, a mite is um, related mites are related to the spiders so they're uh, actually not insects um, um, so they're mites uh, and, and related to the spiders and the varroa mite is a parasite of bees uh, yeah those little, little insects that make honey and um, i've got a few of them here and i've got also some bee parts a few bee wings and bee legs here and um, before i start mounting them and before i talk a little bit about uh, making slides i would like to give you a little bit of context from where i got them from um it was several months ago uh, when uh, you know that uh, might maybe you already know that uh, i am in my non-online life i'm a teacher i'm a high school biology teacher and one of my former students as a goodbye present has given me something as very very unusual something that looks like this okay so there it, it, it's wrapped up paper there is some sticky foil on here and there are lots of dots on here and um, I some time ago if you check my video my channel my other microscopy channel I actually made a video of this but look at this okay so um, basically, um, this uh, paper is uh, full um, of um, yeah, not only mites but also bee parts and some a little bit of honey and so on. And uh, how was this collected? Um, the student, the former student who gave it to me, they are commercial honey producers. And uh, like uh, everyone who is uh, keeping bees, they of course also have to make a control. They have to con check uh, how many mites are there. And I'm going to quickly show you a, a video, uh, two videos, two short videos, so that you get a little bit of context here. Okay, uh, so the first video, this is basically where the bees are. Okay, so this is a video that I also got from my uh, former student here. This is the beehive okay it's just a normal beehive um, and you see the bees flying in and out here um, yeah collecting nectar um, and the bees are of course also important for um, yeah for pollination so for example if you want to have fruits um, and so on they have to be pollinated so the video is looping now and now i'm going to talk a little bit about where the paper comes from yeah so uh, this is uh yeah some kind of a mesh here and they put this uh, uh, this white board um, on it and there is uh, some yeah uh, paper and some sticky foil on it 
and uh, they, you see over here they put it into the beehive and then they leave it in there for a day or so um, and then yeah stuff falls down including the mites and this is uh, where you get this from okay um, and this was basically given to me as a present uh, from uh, my former student uh, because uh, she basically uh, knew <laughs> that I was making YouTube videos and uh, she thought that as a biologist I'd be very happy about having this here and indeed <laughs> was a very original present, was uh, very happy about it. Um, and um, I made a video um, about the whole thing some time ago and if you check my other channel um, then you're going to find the video. Okay, uh, but uh, today um, I want to actually uh, make uh, yeah some some permanent slides here, and uh, I wa also want to quickly mention that uh, there was a comment uh, already some a few hours ago, the very first comment where someone uh, and the comment is not visible anymore unfortunately, but the comment was the following: is how can you reduce bubbles? Um, in um, by making uh, yeah those mounds and, and it was suggested to use soap water. So what I've got here is also some soap water and if you use soap water and if you put the specimen into soap water first um, then uh, this will reduce bubble formation. The reason is because the soap water breaks the surface tension and therefore um, it's, it's going to work better. So um, I'm just going to do now the following before I actually um, before I start making it I would like to show you how those uh, parts and how those mites and bee you know, legs and bee wings, how they look like under the microscope with light coming from the top. Okay, so I have to switch over to the microscope scene and I'm going, you see over here, of course, as always, uh, the stage. And I'm the only thing that I'm doing right now is I'm going to simply take the little Petri dish that I have here. Okay, I'm going to put it directly, I'm going to, yeah, directly on here. And of course, you're not able to see anything because it's too dark, but I'm, I've got a flashlight here. Yeah. It's a pretty strong flashlight. Um, and uh, when you illuminate it uh, from the top, okay, then you're able, um, I'm using now my low power objective. And you see here, this is already a B leg, right? Which kind of also fell off. Yeah, here at the top, okay, the, uh, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to turn on the arrow now so that you see this better, okay? Does this work? Just a second. The arrow, here it is. Ah, here, now I can move it. This here is one of those mites, the Varroa mite. Okay, you can also uh, see a little bit the size difference. Yeah, so here's another one. It's a little bit out of focus. I have to focus this a little bit. So you see the image looks a little bit like, a, like the image of a stereo microscope. Okay, and uh, you know, I have to look around a little bit. Yeah, here is a wing. And what I'd like to do is, is I, I would like to uh, to make uh, a permanently mounted slide, uh, permanently mounted slides of this because um, yeah, I'd like to to keep it for a longer time. Ooh, actually, it's kind of interesting. I recharged the flashlight and it's already dying on me. I cannot believe this. We already had the problem last time. Okay, now you see, yeah. Okay, now you see this again a B leg. Okay. The flashlight is dying on me. I cannot believe it, even though I recharged. So yeah, I think um, if a flashlight <laughs> quits working, <laughs> then this is probably a sign that there's some some problem with the batteries. Okay, it's kind of uh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, um, doesn't matter. I'll uh, put it away um, and I will take away again the little petri dish here and I'm just going to start making then some slides. Uh, but of course I'm going to interrupt myself um, as always because I want to read some of the comments here. Australia 7.30 a.m. Sound is fine. Hello from Lower Austria. Hello from Upper Austria. I can respond. <laughs> Ontario, Canada. Okay. Yeah. And I've watched a lot of your videos. Hi from Amsterdam. Okay. Call from Costa Rica. Okay. Great. So. Um, so first of all, a little bit of theory. Theory has to be okay, and some some advice. And uh, if you have uh, watched some of my live streams and videos before, some of the things might sound a little bit repetitive, but I think it's still important. Uh, so I hope you don't mind. The first thing is the following. Um, number one, lesson number one: not all mounting media are easy to obtain. Okay, that's a problem. Um, what I will be using today is I will be using two types of mounting media. One which is easy to obtain, very easy to obtain, and that is Elmer's PVA glue. 
okay this is a commercial uh, glue i've got the bottle over here this is how it looks like you can order it over amazon it is a water-based glue it is safe so it does not contain any organic solvents as a matter of fact it even says here it's child friendly and uh, it's completely clear the company also makes glues that are white so what i've done is i've taken some of this um, and i filled it in into this bottle here and i added a little bit of water simply to make it a little bit more liquid okay um this is if you don't know which mounting medium to use and if you just want to experiment around a little bit or if you um, want to use a safe mounting medium because you want to do something with children for example in a school i can recommend this because it's simple to use readily available cheap to use safe and yeah however okay um however uh, not all mounting media are the best uh, for every specimen you always have to make sure that the mounting medium m matches the specimen and if you want to mount insects uh, like the wing um, of, of of a bee or if you want or let's say in this case also um, uh, mites yeah uh, arthropods then um, there is another mounting medium that is recommended or at least it's uh, been customarily used for a very long time and that the name is Uperol. Um, now, I bought this bottle, gee, long time ago, and there is a due date. It says, use before 2013. <laughs> it's 10 years overdue, okay? Um, however, it still works. Um, so I bought this, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, this bottle. Um, and uh, I've not, yeah, I've, I've used it, but there was simply so much in it that I yeah, still had a lot left. And I also filled some over here. And uh, I'll be using this because Uperl has one significant advantage. If you want to mount um, insects and, and mites, animals with a so-called exoskeleton and the advantage is, is that it has a so-called a clearing action it makes the specimen brighter um, for whatever reason so usually when you mount little um, insects flies mites whatever um, they appear to be very dark because generally you make a whole mount and whole mounts basically you just take the whole dry specimen and you put it on the slide and then it's too dark but for whatever reason uh, Uperl has the nice tendency to clear the specimen um, normally when you don't use a, um, a medium that clears you have to process the, the specimen somehow kind of bleach it so that it starts to become clear and, and, and transparent but with Uperl you don't have to do that and, and that's kind of one of the the, the nice things here and that's why i'll be using uperol and um, i also want to use for a few of the mites i want to use the pva and i would like to yeah also put the, some of them maybe first a little bit for a couple of minutes maybe into water um soap water so that um you reduce bubble formation okay um so um, I'm going to again read here uh, some of the comments. I just heard about using uh, VALAP in a one-to-one -one ratio of Vaseline, lanolin, and paraffin. Any thoughts? I have no experience with that. Uh, but um, as so often, if you have any recipes that you found out, please do try it out and and uh, uh, yeah, um, comment. Okay. Um, cannot get this Uperl anywhere. Yes, you can get it. However, it's difficult to get. Um, what you have to do is, is you have to uh, try to uh, search uh, chemical companies. Uh, Sigma, Merck, um, yeah, Roth. Uh, there, there are several chemical supplies companies that have them. The difficulty is, is that not always, they will not always send uh, those substances to private people. That is a little bit of a problem. Um, however, I got this Uperl parole some time ago um, I think it was over either over a shop that was selling um, equipment for people who collect insects because they also want to use this or for uh, for uh, school supplies companies so you uh, you got to be patient but I occasionally have seen uh, seen it um, I think the the bigger problem these days is is that not all companies want to ship um, uh, basically liquids that contain solvents so that's a little bit of a, of a, pro, a new problem. Huh? For example, Amazon used to sell also stains and, and, and mounting media and, and so on, but they, they quit doing so uh, because apparently, um, yeah, substances with organic solvents are, they've somehow gone, become stricter right now. Okay. So, um, some comments here. Elmer's 
is amazing. Even after it dries, you can put the slides in warm water and it'll dissolve. So you can redo permanent slides if you're not happy with them and super cheap. Yes, thank you for that comment. So it refers to this uh, amount of glue here, Elmer's white glue, uh, not white glue, clear glue. Um, it is like this that uh, um, if for whatever reason um, the mount, the mount permanent slide did not work out, you can dissolve it again. And I've also heard that some people are actually doing that also with slides that do not um, contain uh, water-based solvent, but organic solvent. So some people have actually also been trying to dissolve the, the mounting medium of slides, which were based on organic solvent. So they simply put it into alcohol or something like that um, to redo the slide. Which which might be which might be necessary sometimes if you have a rather rare specimens okay okay uh, could you for example mount microbes like paramecium if yes would the result the mounting medium affect the cell and quality yes the answer is definitely yes i'll also talk about this could you also mount bigger microbes like stentor um, yes so very briefly before i start uh, actually now mounting because some of you might be already waiting for this yes it is possible to mount delicate water microorganisms as well however and maybe i can show you some i've got uh, actually a box here with some however the problem is is that as soon as the organisms dry out there is the danger that they start to lose their shape so what you sometimes do is you use water-based mounting media of course because if you use alcohol for example or solvent based mounting media what will happen then is that the cell membrane will start to dissolve and then the cell will pop open and run out and you don't have any cell left right um, so for this reason for delicate water microorganisms that do not retain their structure generally you use a water-based mounting medium um, yeah, maybe Elmer's glue. However, this is not uh, commonly used for delicate organisms. They use glycerin gelatin or glycerol jelly. This is um, gelatin uh, mixed with glycerol and it, it becomes semi-solid. It does not comp uh, turn completely hard, but semi-hard. Um, so it does retain a little bit of moisture as well. And sometimes, and this is even something that I have not been trying to do, um, sometimes there are certain methods that you can use to prepare delicate water microorganisms like like you try to fix them it's called the fixing process is a preservation process in a mixture of alcohol and acetate acetic acid which is vinegar the alcohol will cause it to shrink and and and, and the vinegar will cause it to, to swell up again so it's somehow compensated so it does not lose its shape when it starts to dry complicated stuff um yeah that, that's all i want to say here yeah? it takes quite a bit of experience and experimentation so what is your favorite topic for the next live stream? And then I'm really going to start mounting a few things here. Uh, honestly, I always have a big problem thinking of topics and maybe already realized that the announcement of this live stream, usually I pre-announce it, um, is, uh, was a little bit later because I had a real big problem thinking of an interesting topic. And then I realized, actually, I still have a couple of, of slides to, to mount. I wanted to mount a couple of slides. And then I basically decided I'm simply going to collect some of those Varroa mites and uh, put them yeah, on the slide. Yeah, I'm opening now a new slide box, so I do not have to dry wipe them. Um, yeah, uh, this um, um, I, I like those here because they are really clean. Normally, I mean, I've got some others here over there. Where are they? The one here. Uh, I mean, it's they're totally dirty. I don't know if you're able to see. Ah, are you able? Are you able to see it in, in the reflection that it looks so white? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. It, it, there is a real a layer of of, of I don't know. Yeah, calcium carbonate or some kind of water spots on really difficult and these are the, the quality ones look look are you able to see it in the reflections a little bit okay me in, in front of my, my my sweater right this one over here it, it, it looks like it's covered in a white film or something and this one is the clean one yeah it's a huge, huge difference. And I actually had problems cleaning those with water. I could not uh, clean them. I had to actually use vinegar or weak acid uh, to remove uh, to, to remove this because I think that these are water stains um, that are on here. And they're so bad, they're, they're totally useless out of the box, okay? Um, so I, I bought a whole, several of them. They were pretty cheap. And, and then I actually, it says pre-cleaned, but they were not. <laughs> um, so I got now um, those here. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they are clean, okay? Uh, they, they, they are really clean, okay? Um, so um, 
I, I jump ahead. What is the brand of the quality? The, the ones of the quality ones I got from Amazon. Um, it looks like this. Okay. Uh, but I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not saying that these are the only ones. But it, they came also with uh, with uh, uh, some cover glasses. Okay, they were not the cheapest ones though. But what I'm doing is I'm actually reusing them. And the reason why I'm reusing them is is because uh, they have polished edges, so they're not quite as as, as sharp. And the corners are also um, uh, uh, 45 degrees, so um, they're a little bit of a higher quality. So it's actually worth uh, cleaning them. And even uh, today in the afternoon here, um, I've actually these are cleaned cleaned ones that I kind of uh, cleaned with soap and, and water. Okay, um, so these are yeah. So I, I'm not uh, sponsored by this company or anything. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, I'm, I'm using those because uh, I don't have to clean them. Huh? So, and uh, yeah, so, so you know what, let's just get started. Um, why not? Okay. Um, you know what, um, maybe I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys so that it's uh, a little bit better visible. How do we do this? Okay. Let me focus this. The camera that I have here, this is actually one for for taking pictures um, of uh, uh, for taking pictures of, of documents. It's a document camera. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make now one of those slides here, and then I'm going to yeah I'll simply um, read again some questions. I just realized I need some toothpicks. So where are my toothpicks here? Okay. So um, yeah, I got some toothpicks here as well. I'll, I don't know, I'm just gonna start uh, using Uperl. Um, I always recommend that when you actually uh, work uh, that you kind of try to clean um, everything as much as possible. Okay, and um, uh, I forgot, I wanted to do something. Actually, normally what I do is I put a piece of paper beneath it and then I mark uh, the center. So basically I put it on the paper and then um, I kind of mark the center. You know what? I could do it here as well. Okay, uh, so that um, I get the uniform slides. But actually, it's not a bad idea. Why not? Why not? Why not do it live? Okay. Why not do it live? Um, so you'll you'll see the point of this right away. Okay. You'll see the point of this right away. Okay, let's go up. Let's do it like this. Um, do I have a ruler somewhere? I don't know. Some kind of straight edge. I'll just use a pencil. Okay. I think you get the idea. Because I want to have uh, slides that um, kind of look a little bit uh, regular. Okay, and, and a little bit, um, yeah more reproducible and I just put it on here and I basically now know where the middle is and this is where I'll be working on. Okay. So that's um, something that I sometimes like to do. So, um, okay. Um, now this is uh, going to be the, the challenge. How much of the mounting medium am I going to use? Okay. Um, yeah, you don't want to use too much, obviously, but sometimes uh, it might be necessary. So a uh, Uperl mounting medium smells smells nice <laughs> and it is a yellowish liquid. And uh, yeah, you just put a drop on here. And now how do I pick up the how do I pick up uh, the specimen here? And what I usually do is the following. I dip uh, the toothpick in here and then I try to pick up one of those little critters. Okay. And um, it goes, see, ah, it's supposed to be go, go right in the middle here. Um, I try to do it in such a way that it's really submerged, submerged properly. Maybe I should move my microphone a little bit closer to my mouth so that you can hear me better. And um, what I want to use now is, is I want to use uh, the round, the round, uh, I bought myself some round uh, cover glasses. Again, they're also a little bit more expensive. Okay, I am always keep on looking down now. <laughs> always keep eye contact with the audience. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these are round uh, cover glasses that I have and they uh, these I do have to wipe a little bit. Okay, because I'll do it here, because they too, they too look a little bit, uh, yeah, not so clean. Okay. And uh, yeah, how do we do that? Um, either I can use it with my fingers or I use uh, my tweezers. 
And then let's try this. Uh, it's difficult for you to see, okay? But here, and then I kind of drop it on here. And uh, I kind of hope that the specimen stays more or less in the center. Okay, and I let uh, capillary action do the rest. Okay, now um, how long does it take? Uh, how long does it take uh, to dry? A couple of weeks. Okay, yeah, look, it's moving a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, as long as it's kind of more or less in the center. Um, the thing is, is uh, sometimes I will later on then try to remove or scratch away any excess. Um, but um, you have to store it horizontally. And there's one kind of one tip that I'm giving you. Even if you're impatient, don't look at this right now because I'm going to, okay? Uh, but don't look at this because there's the danger of you rotating the objective into the mounting medium which was spilled, okay? So that's a little bit the, the danger. I'm talking from experience. I have done this myself, okay? I was a little bit careless and then all of a sudden I rotated the, yeah, the, the objective into the mounting medium. I'm still going to look at it because um, it's such a large specimen that essentially it doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, because uh, I'm going to be using uh, a low power uh, uh, magnification and therefore it doesn't matter. Um, I don't need high power and therefore it, 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 it's not a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to the microscope again. Okay, and uh, it goes in here, of course. Uh, I have to center it and I have to turn on the light. So I'm using the, here we go. Here it is. I'm going to swing. I have to swing out the filters. Okay. Of course, it is uh, very blurry, but that's also okay. Ooh, unfortunately, I, see, I think I have some dust in here. I think I might have some dust in here uh, as well. Okay. But I think, uh, yeah, it's very dark. Okay. You see that? It's, it's actually a very dark specimen. I'm going to still now going to use the, yeah, here now it's a little bit better. Uh, yeah, there seems to be an air bubble coming out. Okay. Maybe I have to open the condenser a little bit more. Okay. And uh, after, uh, maybe I'm going to show you this next week, how the, how the mites look next week. They should be more transparent. Okay. Yeah. They should be because uh, the, the, if you look at the mite picture in, in the thumbnail, okay, um, usually it takes a little bit of time. And I think one of the reason could also be um, it takes a little bit of time for the air being squeezed out. And when this happens, uh, then uh, there is also not such a big difference in, uh, in refractive index. And this also makes everything appear a little bit more clear. Okay. So I'm going to now interrupt myself again to be able to read some of the comments. Okay, so let me go through here again. Oh, there are lots of comments again. Uh, also a brand of mounting media called Melt Mount, uh, and they have different index of refraction. I don't know Melt Mount, but, the, but it sounds familiar. Maybe I read somewhere. But there is an interesting comment here, the index of refraction. You have to know the following, that, uh, that in, in real, peop real scientists who are actually using doing this stuff like this for research and who want to prepare slides for long term, they will uh, choose the mounting medium also based on the correct index, uh, refractive index index uh, because if the uh, refractive index is not correct and some of the very fine details cannot be seen you just don't get the resolution okay um, for our purposes or for my personal purposes this is not so important because I'm doing this as a hobby and for for educational reasons um, and therefore it is not so critical and therefore you just I don't know I just use a general mounting medium like like a like, like the glue or um, uperol for whatever you want to use it, right? But strictly speaking, there are certain recommended mounting media for certain uh, specimens. So for example, if you want to see the fine structures of diatom shells, you need to use, you should use certain mounting media and so on. Yeah? Um, I'm happy with anything as long as Oliver does a stream. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Um, you would like a live stream of water microorganisms. Yes, um, I'll be honest with you. I've got a whole bunch of jars standing here on the window. 
However, um, I checked today and I'm very disappointed with the development of water microorganisms here um, because uh, the biodiversity is not very high. So it's uh, becoming warm now again. Uh, springtime is starting at least here in Central Europe where I am uh, living. And this means that in the next couple of weeks, the ponds will start to uh, yeah, start uh, to, to, to grow organisms again. And I'll be going out and collecting some water samples. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I just got a stain kit with brilliant Creasel, Janus Green, Methylene Blue, and so on. Yes, that that's cool. Um, it would be kind of interesting um, to see that uh, yeah that you're able to get those stains because uh, as a, as I mentioned already, sometimes chemicals can be a little bit difficult to obtain over mail these days. Yeah, um, uh, I thought it would be not okay. Um, Pre-announce came late. Yes, the pre-announce not only came late, and I also figured out, or I also heard that in the United States, at least a couple of days ago, there was a summertime change, which we did not have right now here in in in, in Europe. So that might also be a little bit for some people. This might be now a little bit of a of, of a, um, a different time. Okay. Um, what is the brand of the quality slides? Yeah, I just mentioned this before. Um, it, the ones that it, they're called. Yeah. That, that, that's the one um, I got them over Amazon okay um, and it says the following slides and cover glasses it's a German brand Bresse. I mean they're also having microscopes and so on um, and uh, yeah it does not say that they are pre-cleaned it also does not say that essentially they have polished edges it doesn't say anything like that and uh, actually they were pretty good Okay, so actually the packaging is kind of underrepresenting um, it a little bit. And then I've got another pack over there, uh, which says pre-cleaned and ready to be used. And these were the, the, the dirty ones. <laughs> it's really strange. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the question of water stains. Um, yes, uh, I think that these are so-called water stains and water stains. I mean, now you can see it quite well again that it's, yeah. Uh, and if you don't believe me that it's really that dirty, I, I have a whole box here. Okay. Uh, yeah. That they're all look, look how white they are. And um, what I think happened is the following is, is um, that water um, contains minerals, um, calcium carbonate, for example. And when you wash the slides and there is a water um, on the slides and it dries on the slide, then all of the minerals that are in the water will deposit on the slide. And yeah, and then you have to use acid uh, which dissolves calcium carbonate and I think it might be calcium carbonate I don't know uh, to, to remove it okay um, and uh, if you don't want this then you should rinse them actually in in the or they sh they the company should have rinsed it in distilled water at the end yeah and I think this is my hypothesis why they are they look so 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 white yeah do you, do you want to have a look at them under the microscope uh, I'll put them under the microscope simply the uh, these are fresh slides okay um, I'm going to show them to you how they look like um, under the microscope, okay? So that you see how, how dirty they are. Okay, I need to close this a little bit and you have to refocus again. Look at this, isn't this cool? <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a blank slide, yeah? It's totally unusable. It, it's really fun. I can't believe it. Yeah? Yeah, so we can go up a little bit with the magnification here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's. Uh, I have no idea what this is, right? Okay, but uh, um, I think you get the idea. Okay, so let's let's put it away again, and uh, I'm going to keep on making a few few of these uh, permanent mounts, and uh, with the hope that some of them uh, will turn out uh, to be nice, because the first try here was again a little bit off center. Um, it's a little bit off center here, but it's uh, it's fine. So um, I have to now uh, store it horizontally for about six weeks. Okay, um, the slow drying process also has an advantage. It gives uh, the mounting medium enough time to infiltrate and to basically be sucked in into all parts of the specimen. And the mounting medium also has the advantage that you can basically transfer organisms directly from alcohol into the mounting medium. Um, there are certain mounting media, resin-based mounting media, 
uh, the, the traditionally there was this uh, yeah um, you no know, I'm also using uh, you kit there was Canada balsam which uses uh, xylene uh, and they, and they they really have solvents uh, and um, yeah they're totally not compatible with either with alcohol or water but with Uperol you can transfer it directly uh, from uh, from alcohol and and if you use Elmer's mounting medium then you can di directly transfer it from water anyway because it's water based okay. I just got a pack of Amscope ground edge slides and they are clean and pretty nice. Yep. Okay. So I think the cheap ones are used are used ones that were badly cleaned. Are there slides with very uh, deep recess? I have some concaves. Yeah, uh, okay. There are two questions here. Um, are used ones that were badly cleaned? I honestly, I don't think think that they were used ones the reason is is because how would you collect slides and then i mean you would this would mean that you were going to recollect the slides and then clean them badly yeah but there are slides that have a so-called concave slides there are slides like this but they're also expensive yeah um you can use a sale a brand microscope slides i use them okay yeah, I recently purchased some prepared slide boxes luckily i got some round cover glasses and some slides um to prepare my own it was a nice surprise since i didn't know it was included yep sometimes they actually come with a few uh blank slides okay so but i'll do the following i'm, I'm just going to move on just make sure that the dirty ones are out of my way i don't want to see them anymore <laughs> and uh, let's let's move on a little bit okay so um should you use uh, because there's a question no no uh, that's cool i only have square ones honestly um if you have square ones just just use square ones they're cheaper and um yeah um maybe i don't know that's that's probably more theoretical M maybe um the round ones besides being looking nice um because they have a larger area uh, com yeah not large area a, a small um, um i would say how do you say compared to the volume uh, i think they might evaporate uh, the, the mounting medium might evaporate a little bit faster because there's simply more uh, place uh, for the um, mounting uh, for the solvent to evaporate so let's let's try it again let's try it again here uh, oh i put my cover glass somewhere i put it over here on the side and uh yeah where is my mounting medium again again a, a small drop here now in the middle okay um again i dip it into here i need i need to put on my glasses because i've already a problem seeing properly yes that's better let me take this and i don't know i'm gonna take another one here okay we put it in here um, sometimes for larger specimens what i do is, is i uh, simply uh, uh, put another drop on top okay so i make a the, the first drop will be very small then i put a larger one on top okay um, this might uh, sometimes also work and uh, here is the cover glass um, you can use your fingers of course but i sometimes prefer using yeah this could be this could be pretty much in the center. Okay. Hopefully this is in the center. Let's have a look here. Uh, and sometimes uh, the mounting medium uh, will not, maybe you're not able to see this quite well here, but sometimes the, I use too little mounting medium, especially if the specimen is thick and then the mounting medium does not uh, cover the whole, um, yeah, the whole cover glass. That's okay okay uh, what i sometimes what you can do later on when it's dry you can always add a little bit uh, using a small pipette you can always add a little bit of mounting medium to the side for for cosmetic purposes uh, so um let's uh, go back again to the um, to this one over here and let's do a little check here again don't use high power because you do not want to dip the objective into Okay, here's another bubble. Okay, ah, here now you see the legs a little bit better. Let's turn, open the condenser. Huh. Yep, and you know what? Next week, I'm I'm, I'm really going to show this to you again, um, and uh, maybe it has cleared a little bit. So that's the first one again. That's the first one again. 
Okay, it's the first one again. I mean, I've done this already a few months ago and then I discovered actually already after a day or two days, they became much more transparent. I don't know what, what chemical reaction takes place, but I've also read somewhere um, that uh, you can use chemicals like potassium hydroxide and also lactic acid. Um, they are kind of also bleaching um, uh, the exoskeleton, the exoskeleton of, 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 of insects and of mites and, and arthropods. Okay, so, okay, uh, so, I don't know, um, a, a rather difficult one because of, 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 of its thick uh, size um, are some, some bee legs and so on. Honestly, I don't think that this is going to, oh, here you see, I don't, I don't think that they might be a, a good one. But do you see, I think it must have been this one over here. Maybe it's this one. Oh, yeah, I think this is a stinger. But I, I was a little bit surprised, or, or was it this one over here? No, this one here. But I was a little bit surprised because usually the stingers of, of, of bees, they have a little um, hook, right? They're able to sting and then, um, yeah, they cannot pull it out anymore. B but those, this stinger over here was kind of straight. So this is something that I did not fully un understand. I think that's the one over here, okay? Um, so I'm going to mount this and then I'm going to see. Okay, so maybe that this is a stinger of a bee, but again, it looks kind of weird because it's supposed to have a little hook, but it didn't, didn't. Okay, so let's do this again. Okay, let's do this. I'm just going to take the slide away here first and uh, put it somewhere. Usually you want to put it maybe in, a, in a, an environment free of dust. So, and I'm going to again use uh, Upril. And then I'm after this one here, I'm gonna read again a couple of comments. I'm gonna use a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. I always close it because... And uh, I think, where is it? I think it must be this here. Is this? It's, it's, ah, there's something else connected as well. Let, let's give this here a try. Does it come off? It comes off. Good. Always make sure that it's properly submerged. And uh, again, a cover glass. I have to wipe it again. And uh, let's uh, give it another try. So. So let's place it again on here. Okay, here we go. Now it stays kind of in the middle. It's fine. Yeah. Um, my microscope arrives on Wednesday and I would cry if I, if I got my objective in the media. Okay, well, um, honestly, things like this happen. Happened to me, will happen sooner or later. Um, if this happens, uh, you uh, have to clean it. You basically take alcohol. Um, a solvent and you care and on a tissue paper and then you carefully clean your objective. Okay, just make sure that uh, no alcohol actually flows into the objective. If the objective is really damaged, okay, for whatever reason, I mean, it can, could happen that you crash the objective into the slide, the slide breaks, you've got glass pieces all over the place, um, can happen. Um, then you do the following, you um, you buy yourself a replacement objective. And sometimes uh, if you contact the company directly, um, then they might not have replacement objectives because many... Um, um, microscopes, uh, they come pre-packaged and pre-assembled uh, from China in many cases. Um, and then the company um, simply sells the complete box uh, with everything pre-assembled. Um, but if you go to AliExpress, um, you can actually buy sometimes the very same objectives relatively cheaply. So this is actually, uh, yeah, you go to Aliex, AliExpress and, and search for some microscope objectives, make sure that you get the same uh, same ones. Um, you'll be surprised uh, what uh, what you're able to find there because all of a sudden you see the same objectives uh, that uh, are mounted on your microscope. Huh? So, um, yeah, let, let's have a look at this here. No, okay, I now got some mounting media here. So, um, this might be the stinger. Um, so, again, I think it might be, but uh, I don't know. We're, we're going to see. And... And, 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 ah, yes. 
Now this is the stinger. Okay. But but again, um, I don't know. Maybe maybe some of you are more into into insects and, and bees, and you know a little bit more. But I, I'm kind of wondering why there is no hook on here. Or maybe uh, yeah, um, yeah. And it's connected uh, to a gland, to the poison gland, of course. And yeah. But on the other hand, yeah, it, yeah, it's quite uh, quite. Look, look, look how, how how pointed it is. A scary looking thing. I'm using another 10 times. I'm not going to go higher than 20 times. Okay. And uh, I'm going to put on the DIC. Looks just kind of nice with the colors, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yep, the bubbles. They might actually disappear. Sometimes um, as the medium dries, uh, sometimes the bubbles, bubbles are push, pushed to the side. No. Yep. And uh, this is the, must somewhere be here at the poisonous gland. And it's way too much the magnification. So let's go down, let's go down for, yeah. And in my microscope, if I want to see the whole field of view, I have to remove the condenser and this here with the four times and then be able to see everything. Yeah. Okay. Yep, seems to be the stinger here. Um, thank you. Do you mean square ones for prepared slides or just for all of them? Um, honestly, um, yeah, I've got square. Look, uh, do the following for general routine use. If you just want to look at a water sample, um, and, uh, you definitely use square slides, uh, square, square cover glasses because they're cheaper. Okay, uh, just for routine use, you definitely want to use square ones. Okay, uh, I only got myself the round ones because um, they kind of look nice for making permanent slides. But honestly, you uh, of course you make you can make permanent slides with uh, square ones. I I have right, um, and the reason um, and because square ones work just as well. Um, basically, that's the reason why it's kind of difficult to get round ones. Um, the reason why I bought the round ones is, is because I wanted to um, experiment a little bit and do some demonstration with the ringing, slide ringing table. Okay, I'll just show you. And now this is actually a good po time to, to talk about this. I've got a slide box here, commercial slide box. And I'm going to show you this here. Just any, now this, is a, this is not such a nicely made one. Look, this looks kind of ugly, right? So let me just show you a nicer one. Um, I've got another slide box here. These are not slides that I made. Okay, so these are commercial ones. And uh, yes, here. Okay, and this is now the real reason why you um, use round, why you use round uh, cover glasses. So this, uh, so this is a commercial uh, slide. Okay. It says here nerve fibers. It's in German, right? Uh, nerve fiber, uh, nerve cells, and. Um, the question is now the following. Why is there this black ring around it? And the reason is, is, uh, be, yeah, how did they put it on? Because they used the slide ringing table some weeks ago. I made a, um, a live stream about this. You're spinning the slide and you apply some nail polish around it. Why do you do that? You do that uh, because the mounting medium that was used does not dry completely. Okay. It remains semi solid. Um, and uh, in order to prevent uh, the moisture from going in and out and, and destabilizing the whole thing, you're applying is a ring around it. And for that, of course, you need, um, if you want to do it efficiently and nicely, you need a, a round cover glass because you'll be spinning the slide and then you can basically apply it. Okay, so this ring is necessary for some mounting media, for example, glycerin jelly, glycerol gelatin uh, does not completely dry, it remains semi solid, and therefore you have to stabilize it, right? Um, Uperol and, and, and Elmer's, they completely dry uh, and turn completely hard, and therefore it's not necessary. Uh, but for some, uh, and why did they use this mounting medium here? Because the nerve fire, uh, the nerve cells are very delicate. Uh, and if you um, use a mounting medium that dries completely or one that contains alcohol or solvents, then the, the shape of the cells changes so much that it's useless. Okay. And, and for this reason, they had to use this uh, um, glycerin gelatin, uh, supposedly, and then you, and this one must be uh, ringed. 
okay so I'll, I'll just put it back again somewhere over there okay and again a couple of of, of uh, questions here up oh i where, where's the okay I, I just lost my chat okay where, where, where's i misclicked a little bit i have to tell you um sorry guys um uh, in my in my um stream i'm still streaming am i Okay, for whatever reason, I am not able to to see my. Okay, just a second. Uh, I've got some technical issues here. Otherwise, I have to switch over to YouTube and see it there. But why can I not see my chat anymore? This is very annoying. Sorry, guys. Uh, for whatever reason, um, you got You have. I, I just see a blank screen right now, and I don't know. I, I type hello. Let's see what happens. Sending. Once the process has been created, your chat will appear live here. Okay, just a second. Am I still online? I'm still online. Hello, yeah, hello back. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. The I ha what I have to do now is is I have to improvise. I'm able to see the chat, but only online in YouTube, but not in OBS Studio anymore. Um, so I still can communicate with you. I think that's important. That's the most important thing now. Okay, and um, yeah, I'll just be doing it like this now. Okay, you are able to see me. Um, so I have to find it again. Yeah, I'm able to see the chat, but unfortunately not in OBS Studio. I misclicked something and I don't know how to get back. <laughs> That's really funny. Why? Why is this happen? But I'll just give me one more minute. If not, I'll just continue over the second window. Since that's a multi-view always on top. That's what you call a demonstration effect. Tools. That's really strange. Inspect. No, that's the wrong one. Okay. Stop stream. Whatever reason, this somehow refresh. Hmm. Docs, log docs, reset docs, reset docs. No, not reset docs. Just a second. YouTube chat, chat. Docs, chat. Okay, unfortunately, I don't know what happened. Uh, studio mode, settings, start recording, no, stop streaming, definitely not. Okay, folks, uh, I will uh, simply continue then and uh, I will move the window to the side here. Okay, and I'll just go on. Um, concave slides, I have to find where I left off. Bee stingers are straight, they have small barbs, which why they stick in the soft tissue. Ah, that's the interesting one. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, but this was too late. Uh, let me go back. Square ones, yes. If you use U-Pearl for mounting, does it make sense if you use ringed slide, ringing table, so that the mounting media keeps in place, or would this make the drying process longer? That's a very interesting and good question. First of all, if you use U-Pearl mounting medium, do not ring it. It's really important. Otherwise, the ring is the nail polish is going to dry first, and then the solvent from U-Pearl cannot evaporate. Okay, so that's not definitely the case. And number two, you don't need to ring it uh, because Uperl is already stable as it is. Okay, it, it turns hard and it turns solid and therefore there is no need to ring it. Okay, uh, for prepared slides, I have commercially prepared slides and some black slides and square cover slips for the black slides. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Germany, um, you mean if I'm from Germany? Nope, neighboring country. Okay, which prepared slides do you have? Okay, I can talk about that as well. Um, the prepared slide box that I have is already quite old. It is the slide box that we're also using in our school. And I can, however, recommend the company. And I have recommended it already in the past as well. Okay, um, the company is known as Lida and they have a huge, huge catalog. Okay, this basically means that you are able to buy those also individual slides. You don't have to buy a complete slide box. You have you can also buy individual slides from them. However, um, they are not cheap, but they're generally of high quality. I mean, I've uh, got some cheaper slide boxes also from Amazon, and there is dust there. There is dirt. It's dirty and, and so on. 
significantly cheaper, but also the quality was lower. But the one from 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 this company um, is is actually quite good. I need now somewhere a place to write it down. I write it down here. Um, L I E D E R dot D E. Okay, uh, it's an L. Okay, um, and uh, if you go there, the web page looks like I don't know from the 1990s. Right, it's a really old web page. Um, however, they have a PDF uh, catalog uh, which you can download for free and also in English. And then, um, yeah, they will even um, prepare, make slides for you. You can order slides, and then they will prepare them for you or make them for you. Um, however, then this takes, of course, a, a long time. I just want to uh, say that uh, they are um, uh, they are producing slides also for for medical um, education and medicine education and so on. Right. So this is a uh, yeah. Visit the web page. Um, I'm not related to them or affiliated with them but uh, these are the slides that we're using and uh, yeah they're pretty uh, they've got a huge catalog okay um, I wonder if you could use vibration to remove bubbles that's a possible I don't know um, usually what you do is, is you, you you make vacuum you apply vacuum and uh, and then this causes the bubbles to become bigger and then float out yeah um, don't remember. It's okay. Okay, let me quickly go through. I just uh, go to the important ones. Uh, you can also uh, by the slide. Okay, I already have the concrete slides with a 0 0.5 divot. Other ones that are even deeper. Um, I don't know about that. Um, honestly, what I've seen is is that some of the the, the slides with a uh, which are concave, um, they were manufactured unevenly. Some some were deeper and others were more shallow. Right. Um, so even the manufacturing tolerance was not the same. Um, I, I think you cannot really make, I think that's also important. You cannot make them too deep or too thick because of the distance to the objective. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of ponds near my house, but what I meant is, uh, were micro hunters. Yeah. I've got a few ponds and, and water ponds in the area. Okay. Um, I would like to have a nice place for water microorganisms, though. If you don't want to make an aquarium for you, then you can, of course, also keep some water jars standing around. Okay. Different species of bee. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Um, the stingers are straight. They have a small barbs, which is why they stick in soft tissue. I'm excited for my birthday next Sunday. I will be even happier if micropunch spawns have higher biodiversity so can join the live stream. Yeah, I think i got to go out and find some microorganisms now. Okay. Uh, um, what's the German translation for mounting media? Uh, um, ein, ein Bett medium? Ein Deck medium. Ein Deck medium. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now I'm getting my German also wrong here. Einschlussmittel. Yes. How many commercial slides do you have? I don't know. I, I tried two or three of them and then they're just basically stuck with one of them. Yeah. Um, okay. You've used blue. Ha did you use, um, uh, the one, the one ring that uh, the, the, the uh, I used blue nail polish. Did they use black nail polish? I don't know if it was actually nail polish, but they have uh, separate paints which are specifically also designed for slide slide making. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. I'm just going to go quick here. I've made some semi permanent slides with pollen grains and glycerin with Fuchsin after a few weeks. The pollen grains change shape from elliptical to spherical. Um, the pollen grains change shape because depending of whether they absorb water or not. So I suppose, I assume that maybe also in nature, they will change their shape based on how much moisture there is, right? Um, I know that for pollen grains, the only thing that I can re recommend, because this is the standard medium, that is glycerin gelatin according to Kisser. K-I-S-S-E-R. That's uh, the Kisser's... Uh, basically the recipe for glycerin gelatin is apparently the one which is standard for uh, by the people who are studying pollen okay so it's not the normal glycerin gelatin but the one uh, according to kisser k i -S, -S, s e r okay um I know Lida. I have some of them. That's cool coincidence yep uh, no Lida is a, is a um, the company is, is a quite a well known one okay are all prepared slides handmade um I would, well, certain steps certainly are hand, require hand making, but I know that there are, especially in the medical sector, when you have to make a lot of slides for, for diagnosis and so on, that apparently there are slide making machines out there, um, that actually, uh, do that automatic or semi-automatic. 
Is it worth buying a 20 times plan objective? Um, I like 20 times, especially if you look at water samples. It depends what you want to look at. Um, but I, cons um, I work a lot with 20 times because I kind of like this uh, intermediate magnification. Okay. So um, I, I want to make a few more. Uh, um, I want to make a few more specimens because I actually only made what? Three up to now. <laughs> I prepared so many more. I thought, oh my gosh, do I have enough um, things to mount? Um, and I'm going to try now a wing. Okay. There were also a couple of, 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 of wings uh, in there that the bees lost. And uh, let's make a, a, a wing. Ah, yeah, by the way, did you, did you see that? The slides are all separated by a piece of paper. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so maybe that they don't stick together. Um, yeah, so I will be using, let's do another u pearl one and then I want to try Elmer's glue. Okay. So let's meet, let me try again. So, and, uh, and the wing is, of course, a little bit more difficult because it's very flat. So, um, I mean, bees have a first and a second pair of wing. I don't know which one's which now. Okay. Um, so yeah, again, let's put it in here. And does it come, come off? Does it come off? Okay. Uh, actually, actually, uh, it is already submerged. Okay. Maybe, maybe by moving it around a little bit, maybe this way I can remove some of the air bubbles. I don't know. But it's, is it covered? It seems to be almost covered now. No. Okay, now it's now it's covered. Now now it now it's completely submerged. So let's give it another try. Okay. So let me see. So uh, well. Uh, some questions here belong to how to purchase u -Pearl. Is it okay to tell here where it's easy to buy in Germany or Western Europe or better not? I mean, I don't mind. I mean, whether uh, I can only tell you that I bought mine. I think it was either from a school. This was over 10 years ago, either from a school supplies company or a shop selling uh, parts and uh, equipment for people who study insects. Um, but generally, you can contact uh, the, those chemical companies, Merck, in Germany, uh, Sigma Aldrich, um, um, there are different chemical companies uh, that uh, to make lab supplies um, and uh, generally they uh, should have them. The question, I, I know they have them because I found them online. Okay, um, they actually add, and even with a price tag on it, um, not, not always cheap and sometimes in, in, in large quantities. Um, yeah, that you never need. But uh, so I know that they do exist but uh, they can be a little bit uh, only found in specialized shops. Yeah. yeah, they will not supply to private individuals. That's indeed uh, that's indeed uh, the, the, the issue here. Yeah. What about the uh, dish soap trick? Would that work with u -Pearl? With u -Pearl, it's probably not necessary. Okay. The reason is, is the following because um, u is not, uh, you should not use uh, the dish soap uh, uh, thing with u -Pearl because u -Pearl and water are not so compatible. Okay, and if you use now soap water and mix it with u -Pearl, then um, essentially you will have some water bubbles enclosed in u -Pearl, and you don't want that. Okay, um, it's only good if you uh, use may maybe the dish soap water with uh, uh, with Elmer's glue because it's both water. Okay, um, yeah, so that's uh, actually this worked actually better than I expected. Um, uh, obviously, because the, the wing is, is relatively flat. Okay, so let me again move over here i still cannot see the chat in in obs studio i'm using obs studio for for doing the live stream and i somehow misclicked and then all of a sudden the the chat was gone oh unfortunately a bubble okay and it's a little bit too bright as well so when we close the condenser we're able to see this another bubble but let's see if uh, maybe it's also uh, kind of worth uh, investigating let's see if the bubbles will actually stay and uh, yeah, and let's go up again with the magnification. Of course, we have to refocus a little bit. And then you see the tiny little hair yeah, of, of the wing. And of course, if I shift around to play around with the prism, then I'm able to get different different color colors as well. Maybe, I don't know, 
20 times should be okay. Yeah. Let's remember a little bit how it looks like and then let's check again next week to see if indeed it started to clear up a little bit. Okay. So that is now the wing of a B. I think it must, must be either the front or the back wing. Okay. So again, a couple of questions. Um, what about, yeah. Any recommendations for mounting fungi and spores? Would you think it would be similar to other plants? Um, I think fungi and spo spores, maybe less so, but actually fungi as such, you have to really cut them thin. And I think they're kind of sensitive as well to shrinkage. Okay. Um, would you think that is similar to other plant leaf mount procedures? I think it could be similar because uh, because fungi also have uh, rigid cell walls. They're made of a different material. They're made of chitin and not of cellulose. Um, but uh, because they have a cell wall, I think maybe the cells are a little bit more st uh, stable. Okay. I got mine from Lab Tech in England. You know what? Let me quickly do a short Google, not Google, but um, there is, uh, how is this called, um, in, 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 in the UK, uh, let me quickly find this, Brunel Microscopes in the UK. I wonder if they, uh, if they sell this. I'm online right now. Um, if you want, again, I'm not affiliated with them, but there is brunelmicroscopes.co dot uk and they sell also a lot of stains so maybe that they also sell some um uh, some mounting media chemicals and stains slide preparation equipment yeah, there's a lot of hardware solvents and regions more acid uh, flotation histoclear glycerin formalin all of, yeah. Insect killing fluid, they have acidic acid. Okay. Um, paraffin wax, I don't see a mounting. Okay, you know what? Um, visit. I'm, I'm going to post the link directly into the chat, okay? Um, I'm going to post it directly into the chat. Plop. And uh, maybe they, uh, maybe you're able to uh, find some uh, some mounting media there. I know that they're selling stains. Again, I'm not uh, affiliated with them. I'm, I got my slide ringing table from them, um, and you might actually uh, check them out. Okay. Um, let me quickly go back here again. So, okay. So this is basically the the wing of the the wing of the 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 bee. Okay. What time is it? I always got to check time. Okay. Yeah, uh, I have unfortunately missed most of your live stream. Don't worry, uh, it will go online. I have recently used some UV resin to mount down feather I found and it worked extremely well. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I know that there are some um, um, uh, mounting media that solidify, um, or at least uh, um, I've heard about them that uh, when you uh, uh, put ultraviolet light on them, um, I know that there are some nail polish uh, that are basically that uh, solidify when you put um, uh, put UV light on it. Um, so that is something that I uh, would think would be worth trying out, um, that you use uh, this uh, type of UV sensitive um, or UV hardening nail polish. Um, not tried it out, but I can imagine that the following advantages, because there is no evaporating solvent, um, there should also not be any shrinkage, because usually there's a shrinking and, and bubble formation is, is always an issue. And if uh, the mounting medium starts to shrink, then there are tensions that start to appear, and sometimes this causes the formation of bubbles, and sometimes even the cover glass not to stay on very strongly. Okay, um, So this is actually a little bit my hope uh, for, about concerning UV, uh, mounting media that they don't because they don't have solvents that they actually might not shrink as much okay but i've not uh, got a lot of experience with that okay uh, you have not used mounting media for water organisms the reason is, is because water organisms are difficult to mount um, they like to shrink a lot okay so what i'm going to do now is the following i'm going to now um, use uh, some of uh, the pva glue um, so I'm going to close the u -pearl and I'm going to make a few mounts using the PVA glue with and without the dishwashing uh, technique, just uh, for, for experimentation. I've not tried this yet, okay? 
I've uh, not tried this yet. The nail resin is exactly what I used. It was extremely cheap, 10 bottles for 21 pounds with a UV lamp. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's interesting. I will, um, I think I'm gonna try this as well. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, here is, oh, I have to switch over again to the scene face. So here we are again. And, uh, oh, there are two slides. This one was already on here. And um, I'm going to now again, you know what, just for comparison, I'm gonna mount again one of those um, one of those mites, but this, this time using PVA. And um, yeah, another mite I should actually drop into or quickly uh, drop into the, um, you know what I'm gonna do, maybe, maybe over here, I'm going to put some of the soap water in here so it's easier, uh, more easily accessible. And I'm going to simply take one of those mites and those mites, they seem to be hydrophobic anyway. So, oh yeah, see, it's difficult to get. Okay, and I'm gonna put it into the soap water. You might not be able to see it, okay. And the other one I'm just going to uh, mount directly. So I need to use Elmer's PVA. So that is, for those of you who joined late, that's this glue over here polyvinyl um, alcohol, polyvinyl acetate, or some kind of a mixture, uh, diluted a little bit with water to make it more fluid. Okay, was this a mite? No, I don't know. So, and uh, same story. Uh, it's really flowing. Okay, this one is completely clear now. Always close it and um, I will you turn it around uh, again dip it in here and try to pick up one of those guys and uh, put it on here and then we can actually compare next week the clearing action or the non-existent clearing action rather <laughs> um, of, uh, of of this mounting medium so I mean, I know I'm, I'm always looking down on the table and not into the camera. I hope you don't mind. So maybe I have to think of a system somehow to put the camera somewhere further down um, on the table. But then um, you're not able to see the green screen. Uh, the camera's not able to see the green screen behind me because my wall in the background is painted green so that I can superimpose my face uh, over the desk that I have here. So, so let's try this again. Okay, here we go. So this is now the mite with the glue. Well, it seems to also spread quite nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm going to simply put it also directly under the microscope. I don't think that there's gonna be a huge difference right now to the other, uh, but you never know, just for the sake of, of, of interest. Where is it? Here it is. Ah, uh, yeah, bubble. Okay. Yeah, so that's how it looks like. Uh, pretty much uh, very similar to the others. Okay. Okay, a bubble over here. Yeah, there seems to be another bubble over here, down here as well. But we're gonna see, okay? So um, I'm going to leave it here uh, and I'm going to now mount uh, the other one. But this one, uh, uh, the one that I basically had in soap water first. Um, why soap water? Um, the idea is the following a little bit. I think it's it's really twofold. Um, so you simply use some dishwashing soap water with a little bit, uh, I diluted that. And I think the reason is the following. If you put it for a couple of minutes into water first, then the water is able to go into this, the organism and kind of push out the air. That's kind of uh, hope number one or the idea number one. And the second thing is, is because of the soap, uh, it destroys the surface tension of the water. So this means that bubbles don't cannot form quite as easily. That's kind of the idea. Um, and that maybe that the water-based uh, mounting medium can make better contact um, with uh, w with the mite and or and or maybe the soap is also removes some of the grease or fat layer that might be on the um, on the specimen which might also cause it cause the glue maybe not to go too well um, on, on it so I don't know okay um, so what I'm gonna do now is same as before um, PVA glue Okay, and uh, then I better label the whole thing. Uh, otherwise, I don't know which one was the one with soap water and which one wasn't. Um, and uh, do I still have some of those? Ah, there's still some, there's still one left. 
No, that's not the one I wanted to use. I wanted to use this one here. Ah, my mistake. Okay. Um, over here, I have got the... Uh, the, of course, tweezers like these are always a problem because you might actually end up dam damaging the specimen. Okay, here it is. Uh, I'm going to directly, I don't know, um, transfer it into... You wipe the tweezers. Okay, yeah, it's completely submerged. Do you, do you actually see this? I have some glue here on the side as well. Um, usually what I recommend is, is don't uh, don't uh, remove it, okay? Just let it dry and then use a sharp knife or so to scratch it off. And uh, last but not least, we have, of course, a cover glass. And uh, yeah. here we go. So... And again, I will put the cover glass on top. Again, over YouTube, over the live stream, seeing these things might not be so easy because everything's so transparent. Yeah, so um, let's have a look if this one over here somehow works better concerning bubble formation or not. I don't know. Okay, so microscope scene. So this is the one of the first one. And over here, we've got the other one. Oh. It does look a little bit more clear, but I don't know if this is because of the soap. Yeah. But again, I think, and there's a tiny bubble here. Yeah. Ah, look, there are some bubbles floating around. Kind of shows that uh, the thing is still liquid. And uh, this one is the one without soap water. And look, the bubbles become bigger. So apparently, maybe, maybe slowly the glue goes into the into the organism and kind of pushes out the the and pushes out the ear, which wouldn't be bad really, because then everything is properly preserved. Yeah. But uh, we'll wait um, until a couple of days until the whole thing is dry. So I will go back to some of the questions again. Um, yeah, are those claws? I don't know exactly. Okay, uh, are you talking about the mite now? Yeah, these are the legs of the mite, if this is the kind of thing. What kind of resin did you use? Okay, hi, I'm from Switzerland. I used Uhu glue, nitrocellulose, it's called. I think Uhu with the acetone. I think this is not nitrocellulose. Okay. Uh -huh. I think uh, I think it uh, uh, glue might be chemically similar to clear nail polish. Uh, I darkly remember. Okay, uh, you mentioned using vacuum to remove bubbles. Uh, what is the procedure? Um, I only uh, know that. Okay, that's an, also an interesting one. Um, what you have to do is is you have to make sure that the uh, mounting media, especially if you make one yourself, that they themselves do not contain too much dissolved air. And what you do is, is you apply a vacuum and there are some so-called uh, vacuum, not, not electrical vacuum pumps, but there are, you can create a vacuum by connecting a, a flask. There's a specific system to flowing water. So basically you connect it um, to um, your tap yeah, and you turn on the tap water, and because the water streams down, it pulls out the air from the flask. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's able to create a pretty strong vacuum. And with uh, in the lab, we've used these systems to degas certain chemicals. Now, of course, when you degas something, then uh, this uh, there could still be some um, uh, how do you say um, some air in the specimen itself. Okay, so if I remove uh, the air, or if I'm degassing, for example, uh, yeah, a mounting medium, then of course there could still be some air in 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 a specimen. So my guess was that maybe, and I've not tried this, maybe take those slides and also degas them somehow by applying a vacuum. And when you do that, then because of the low pressure, what's going to happen is, is that the, the, the air is going to be sucked out, the bubbles will expand and they will hope float to the side. And then when you have, again, normal air pressure, then it's going to collapse again and, and the bubbles are gone. This is kind of the idea. Um, and uh, yeah, but I have not tried it. Yeah. 
Can polyvinyl and PVA be used as a mounting medium as opposed to polyvinyl? Um, the thing is, uh, I think if I remember correctly, that there seems to be uh, both is possible. Um, I've read it somewhere and apparently sometimes it's even a mix of both polyvinyl alcohol and polyvinyl acetate. Um, so this is something that... Uh, because the recipe is is apparently also a little bit secret, but I heard there is a mixture of PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, and, and acetate apparently in there. Apparently, um, yeah. So so I think it should be should work. Is it okay to contact you by email to give some ideas or suggestions to you uh, belonging topics for the live chat? Is it the same email address like in the publisher ma, ma, the Microhunter magazine? Yeah, it's editor at microhunter dot com. Um, yeah um wow have you been already around ever since i'm um, many years several years ago I actually published a pdf uh a magazine where people sent me articles and uh, i put them into a pdf and made them available online yeah which phone is the best to film through ips and three times optical zoom make a difference like samsung um Basically, the question is, is now which mobile phone is the best to film through the eyepiece? And um, I wouldn't be able to say that uh, because I would say it's not the mobile phone that is the limiting factor. I would say it depends more on the eyepiece. What is the field of view of the eyepiece and so on? Yeah? Um, the mobile phone, if the mobile phone is able to make a perfect or very good video or pictures in, in without a microscope, um, then why should it not make one a good one if properly set up with a microscope? So I think the, the mobile phone itself is really not the issue so much. The modern mobile phones, they have a very, uh, um, high resolution anyway um, there is plenty of light available over the microscope um, yeah so um, would an optical zoom make a difference an optical zoom yes i think an optical zoom is very good because it allows you to zoom in and then you do not see the image in such a circle anymore but you have it more filled in right so without a zoom you might see the image when you film through the eyepiece in a circle and then when you have an optical zoom uh, you actually might not be able to see the circle as much so optical zooms would actually probably be, be an advantage uh, digital zooms no because you don't increase the resolution you just might as well crop the image in a computer right how about doing a course in cell biology in 10 minute sessions on saturday evenings then 20 minutes for relevant questions followed by 20 minutes for general questions honestly I've been thinking about this. <laughs> um, cell biology in 20 minute sessions on Saturday evenings. I mean, I don't want to give up on the on the more practical aspect um, of this live stream, but I have in be indeed been thinking about doing a little bit of, of, of yeah, I would say biology lessons for 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 adults, maybe, you know, uh, because there are many people, um, I mean, I've been teaching biology now for high schools. I mean, they're almost adults anyway, um, almost. Uh, but, uh, you know, with, with people who are adults, um, you can basically be a little bit more fast paced. Uh, I've been thinking about this. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, would be a possibility. But, you know, if you ever give cell biology lessons, then this can be also a little bit theoretical, right? I have a Swift SW380T microscope. I remember you said in a review video of the microscope that the, that the stage measurements were upside down. <laughs> I remember this. It's not a big problem. <laughs> no, it was a, a little bit. I found it a little bit funny. There were some, some um, simply the labeling of the of the micrometer slide was was inverted in my view, but it, it didn't impact at all on 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 the usability of the microscope. Okay, um, so this uh, this is the thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There is nothing wrong with a bit of theory. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. Um, um, hmm. Maybe if I do that, maybe not in this channel, but maybe in my other, in the microhunter microscopy main channel, because that is actually the one where I'm talking more about nature observation, more about the, not so much about microscopy itself, but on the things that you can see with a microscope, right? Um, yeah, if, if you, <laughs> uh, if you're really eager to, to, Okay, I'm just gonna say this. You can, if you really want to know, uh, I've, I've prepared actually a, a website for my own students with uh, some YouTube videos. 
um, so as review some of the YouTube videos are really old uh, some of them are a little bit more new you can visit them if you want to see a couple of my biology lessons uh, you can visit okbiology in one word dot com okbiology dot com okbiology.com and then you're going to see a couple of, of videos that I put online for my students okay <laughs> so yeah it's uh, basically some review videos that I made it's it's a uh, it's more on the theoretical side okay biochemistry stuff yeah and uh, and things like this yeah um, and there is of course also about cell organelles and, and so on so, and some of the videos uh, that uh, are on there are a little bit older as well but if you visit okbiology dot com then you're going to end up on a website that i prepared for some of my students as well so uh, this one just a second i gotta be careful this one over here i have to label this this one was with soap so i'm going to uh, put an s on here so just a second yeah. so s is uh, the s one is, is is with soap okay and uh, the other one is not and uh, i'm just going to yeah keep it here and put them over there so that they can dry properly. I'm going to go back into the first one again. Let's see if the first one has somehow changed a little bit. See in microscope. And uh, no, not a lot, okay? Yeah. Not a lot. Yeah. So, but maybe in a couple of days it might clear up a little bit. Uh, for theory love stream could you take some prepared slides and talk about them maybe prepared slides about plants human anatomy and so on yeah i could do that i've noticed that basically all wings have some kind of hair on dots does this create an ear cushion that helps it with flight um i think I, that's a good point the question is, is why are so many insect wings why do they have hair on it and i think indeed it must i suppose either to do something with stability or aerodynamics yeah um so um so I would be uh, would not be surprised, uh, but then again, um, you have to understand, and this is so uh, a little bit like this: that small objects for small objects, um, when small objects like bacteria or tiny insects, when they move through air, uh, for them air is more thick, viscous than than for larger objects. This has to do with the so-called the Reynolds number. It's called. This is uh, the basically the viscosity, the perceived viscosity of the air. So for us, when I move through air, the air appears to be very like a gas, right? Very light. But when a a, a microbe or a fly moves through air, it will kind of perceive it uh, not like a gas, but more like a liquid. Like it's almost like when I move through water. Yeah. Um, so um, and I uh, saw so the aerodynamics of, of of insects or tiny objects is different than the aerodynamics of of, of large objects. I'm sidetracking again. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have too many scopes for stereos on five compounds. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I have I've got uh, what I think two stereoscopes and the others are compound. Yeah. So uh, what time is it even? Oh, it's one and a half hours already. Time passes so quickly. Time passes so quickly. So I'm going to do now the following. I'm going to now do a last one, a very, very difficult one. Okay. And this is highly experimental. I have not tried this yet. It's almost 5 a.m. Somebody says, yeah. Wow. I, I, honestly, uh, I, I, I am absolutely honored and surprised that, that some of you are actually uh, staying up that, that late and or that early. Um, so where is this? I'm going to now do the following. I would like to mount a very, very thick specimen, which is the leg of one of those bees here. Okay. I don't know if this is even a good idea. Um, I need a lot of mounting medium now. Okay. I'm going to use Uperol. Okay. Because... Um, don't forget one thing, that, that uh, uh, mounting media that contains some kind of a solvent they also kind of preserve quite well so i'm going to use a very fat drop uh, it's a little too liquid maybe okay let's pull out one of those huge insect legs okay and uh, make sure that it's completely submerged because again the reason is is because i would like to know uh, to what extent uh, this mounting medium is able to to clear and, and 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 to 
clear the, the, the object and to make it more transparent. And then, folks, I'm going to call it quits for this week, uh, for this uh, for today. This one is, is way too much mounting meat. It's going to run out on the side, right? Because it's one and a half hours. Cannot believe it. Ah, uh, I don't want to use this. There is a look, look, there's a little edge missing here. And if I use a, a cover glass, then it should be nice. Because otherwise, why, why use one? Okay, so let me clean it again. And uh, there is going to be lots of mounting medium running out. Yeah, so this is, yeah, that's the, the leg of the bee. Again, let's put it there. And it will take a couple of weeks of drying time. Where is the microscope view? Here it is, and I have to, I'm gonna go down with the magnification. Okay. Yeah. Very dark, as you can see, of course. And, uh, but here is the claw. Here is the claw of the leg of the bee. Okay, so uh, folks, uh, I think uh, I'm quickly going to go through the last comments and then I'm going to call it quits. Thank you for explaining that. I've tried to explain that microbes have moved different in air than we do, so we did with so, so many people and no one gets it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, that, that is basically, uh, okay, uh, when the Wright brothers, over a hundred years ago, when they made the first flying motorized airplane, they were not the first one who made airplanes, but the first motorized powered airplane, they discovered that small, that small model airplanes behave differently than large ones. Okay. Um, and we see the same effect also with microorganisms. When you see um, a microorganism move through water, for example, or through, yeah, then you, the water will uh, appear to be syrupy, very thick under the microscope, right? Um, also, um, and, and so it, the behavior is different, yeah? Um, and uh, this is basically uh, something that is in very well known in fluid dynamics, okay? It makes sense if you move through thick material like water, it's better to have uneven skin like a shark skin because totally smooth surfaces create more drag. Yeah, because apparently there are in the so-called boundary layer, which is the surface, there are small turbulences because of the rough skin. And this causes apparently the water flow more smoothly over it. Okay. Okay, then a lots of thank yous here. Would you have to use a cover slip on u -Pearl or could you put it under the microscope after it dries? Would you have to use a cover slip? Or could you put it on after it dries? I suppose what you mean is, is can you dry it um, without a cover slip? Is If this is the question, then I would say, of course you can do that, but then the surface is uneven, okay? And what you want is, is you wanna make sure that everything is even and flat because an uneven surface also means that the light is scattered and refracted differently. And this can cause, uh, yeah, the picture not to be, the image not to be so nice. So the a cover glass actually makes sure that the, 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 the surface is flat, okay? Otherwise, in the objective, uh, when you look at it, then the left side is, is, is lower, the right side is higher because of the, the mounting medium not being smooth. And then you don't get a, a consistent picture and then it's, it's blurry, okay? Okay. Uh, and without a cover slip, you get dust. That, that, that's, of course, also a, a thing, right? And it's not as easy to clean off. Yeah. So people, um, this was, uh, this was uh, uh, again, uh, a little bit longer than I expected. I actually said this, I'm going to do a little bit shorter today. But uh, yeah, thanks to all of your questions, for all of your questions. There was actually um, quite, a, yeah, quite a few interesting uh, questions that I, I got today. Um, what I'm going to uh, do now is I'm just going to say bye-bye uh, to you, to all of you. Um, if you have any recommendations uh, on what you're interested in, just like I've seen uh, today, um, yeah, I think uh, 
it's a good recommendation. Maybe I'm going to do a little bit of, of shorter, that's really important, maybe shorter uh, cell biology uh, lessons or, or slides, um, live streams, um, maybe related to, um, yeah, to the microscope, of course, yeah, so that uh, I can actually also demonstrate and show you some of the things directly under the microscope. I have to plan out a few things uh, in order to do that. But I've been thinking about this as well. Um, I'm going to, yeah, um, just say bye-bye. Hopefully see you again next Saturday. Um, and uh, yeah, happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, yeah, enjoy microscopy and see you around. Bye-bye.